What would you do to get in a video by Rev Says Desu? Because today we're going to be watching her Asmongold hit piece backfired horribly. And it's a doozy uh, because, well, as an anime woman, this is apparently very relevant to anime and women. And it all ties back to Asmongold, the brand new VTuber connoisseur. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. Mm. So today we're gonna be talking Hi, about Rev. a video that's making the rounds on social media for all the wrong reasons. Okay. It comes from a channel titled Catastrophic Claire Rar. Yes, very <laughs> wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what's really embarrassing? Um, so a long time ago, I used to do like the whole Rar thing too, right? Like the Rar XD and I used to have people call me Mari Rari, and yeah, it was like a super cringe moment for me, but yeah, so. Rar XD, Quirk Chungus, uh, <laughs> Quirk Chungus, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> But the video people are talking about is her latest one titled, Japan Wants to mm. Censor Anime Asmongold Reaction. Now in- Oh my gosh. I think um this person, Claire Rar, had- unlisted this or straight up deleted it because it's not there on her channel anymore and it's interesting how like <laughs> one thing that i think people on the internet need to know is that even after you upload something the moment you take it down it's probably still up because you have people like rev or someone else who may have already downloaded or like reacted to it so like i don't know i feel like uh Taking it down didn't really do much. In this video, not only does she call out Asmongold, but she also calls out mm. the entire anime and manga industry, as well as Japanese society, which according to her is so predatory and dangerous, pretty much no woman is safe in Japan. Now let's start- Wow, that is that is a lot of claims. You go from Asmongold to anime, manga, Japanese society. That's in six minutes and 23 seconds, really? With the thumbnail itself, it is pretty heinous. It is implying mm. very heavily that Asmongold is trying to protect predators. Now, what justifies in her mind this slander? Well, it comes from a clip from a recent Asmongold video where he's talking about censorship of anime and manga. It's about gold. Okay, but like, that's kind of wild because if you're going to take someone out of context and you're going to like put that in like a thumbnail, um, you... Dude, you better be careful because that can definitely get you sued. Going in favor of free expression and free speech without having a unelected cabal of companies acting as a cartel that are behaving as censors for that speech and expression. I have no idea what the hell Asmongold just talked about just now. I, I don't understand what that clip was talking about. Maybe it's my ADHD brain. I, I don't know. But I literally do not understand what was just talked about. So maybe I, let me know if I should actually watch Asmongold's video on this because I, I don't understand what this clip is talking about. Impression. Like it's just it's just so sad that people are I don't get it. this and it's just going unchecked and I just wanted to say my piece on it. Does it I don't understand what is so sad about this. I'm very confused. So basically what oh. Asmongold is saying is that groups like the United Nations or payment processors like Visa or MasterCard should have no say in the production of anime and manga in Japan. And hot take, he's correct. These Oh, okay, well, thank you, Brad, for explaining that to me because I, I did not understand the context of that at all. Oh, this kind of reminds me. Oh, yeah, we like Visa, MasterCard's doing that whole, like, thing where they're trying to dictate what, like, the payment platforms can do or also take away, like, their payment. We just talked about this in the other video. And I had uploaded and that's kind of fascinating how something like <laughs> I don't understand how Clara Rar was watched Asmongold talk about that if what Rev is saying like I might have to watch it, the video myself but if what Rev is saying is true how could you take a moment of that line of Asmongold saying that and then take it out of context and say he wants to protect predators I don't really understand that logic here organizations have really no sense being involved with these things. It, mm. It's way beyond their reach. They shouldn't be controlling what's going on in the anime and manga industries. And anyone who disagrees with that has to basically bootlick the United Nations, which we'll talk about them later in the video. They are a terrible organization that has been going after Japan for decades now, trying to demonize and categorize a lot of fictional content as illegal, as she will do in her own video. So let's... 
I'm a little curious on like when it when it comes to like creators and YouTubers choosing their branding and what they want their channel to be known for when like creators um because this is kind of like political so when creators start to get into the political territory about this if that's like not you the main focus of your channel's content i am curious what the marketing or business decision is to want to make a video uh criticizing an entire culture like i i am curious what the move was for this other than to potentially get a lot of clickbaited views but then like what happens after that like do you continue to make political content after that or do you just start playing like games like i i feel like i feel like a lot of creators don't think about how important their branding is when they're deciding on their content pillars just food for thought let her uh continue on this is actually from one of the uh, clips she posted herself on a Twitter, but let's give it a listen. But in 20... Wait, hold on. The UN doesn't want to censor normal anime. Normal anime? What do you... Are you... Are you ta do you... What's considered normal anime? I don't, I don't know. They want to censor child... Oh. And the exploitation of women, which is fair the full video is on my youtube hmm okay oh i think i know what this argument's going to be about right t24 it there's no lollipops allowed on the anime community i think that's the territory this lady is going in there's no lollipops and there's no i can't think of a, of a clever play on word for the other thing it's still legal to own anime and manga child pornography and let me tell you, it is a booming industry. So how do you know this? Are you partaking in this kind of media? Man, this is one of those types of topics, which it looks like she got community noted, by the way. This is one of those topics where if you really don't know what you're talking about, you probably shouldn't comment unless if you want to get roasted and community noted. As always, I think there's something very disturbing about likening real life victimization to manga panels but as always right. if you don't like certain aspects of anime or manga or just fictional content generally that's okay that's your prerogative you're allowed to not like things but right. it doesn't justify you demonizing and attacking an entire nation of people as well as the related mediums and on top of that if you're going to create this standard for other people where in the video she says if a character is under 18 and sexualized that's CP. Well, that standard's not going to just be applied to the people you're attacking. It's also going to be applied to yourself. And if you look through her Twitter account, I mean, you have characters like this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not the AI art. Oh, man. So, a little fun fact. It's like, <laughs> that is really uncanny to look at. Fun fact, um, they change Sailor Moon's uh, Usagi's age because the original like Sailor Moon she was like I think in middle school or eighth grade or something like that and then Tuxedo Mask was like oh god I cannot remember their ages off the top of my head but basically they had to age Usagi up a lot more for the re-release for Sailor Moon Crystal because of the controversy between like the age gap between the two characters so when you look at the ages of these characters they, they are on the younger side and it's kind of interesting that this person is making ai arts of them oh boy it's from sailor moon this character's 16 years old she made ai generated art without that is some hella boobage for and it looks god awful oh my god it's like going inside of it's ugh. I, I don't like AI art. It is very scary to look at. It, it, ooh, it does not look right. It looks like kind of, it reminds me of like, you remember that one episode of Full Metal Alchemist when they combine the dog and the girl together and it just looks like a monster? That's kind of what AI art looks like to me. It is literally a weird alchemation of just blobs. Obviously some sexual aspects to it with the hashtag booba and she would do that Burba. again. Same character with uh, hashtag thick thighs. Wait, 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 wait. Did she say, this is actually me with AI filter? Waifu thighs save lives, like if you agree. Isn't this character like 16 in the show? Hashtag thick thighs, uh, posting this that she created with AI as well. Uh, that would make her a hypocrite under her own standards. On top of that, she's a big Evangelion fan. No, no, 
There is no way you're an Evangelion fan and you're... So okay, <sighs> this seems to me like this person is grifting because if you're... if you, Like Rev said, if you have problems with the, that type of like fictional media, like, okay, that's your decision. But it is kind of weird that you are an Evangelion fan when we all know the ages of those characters and like, I don't think I will ever get that one scene out of my head where Shinji is uh, performing weird acts on an unconscious female laying down. Anyways, if you know, you know, but like, it's kind of weird to be a fan of this and then say the stuff you're saying. If you've watched the anime, you know there's a lot of fan service featuring underage characters. So yeah. clearly she either didn't watch this or she's just a massive hypocrite. And of course, you know, because I always check this, Real one. Oh, let me guess, she's a furry. Whoever put this in, absolute real one. The voice is Hugh Jackman, by the way. And he, and he plays the Easter Bunny. <laughs> oh, he's so great. I love his voice in this movie. I think I love his character in this movie. He's such like a hard ass rabbit. I, I smash? You don't see it a lot. So yes, definitely smash. Yep, uh, she's a furry. No. I personally am not into furry content. I'm sorry for my furry viewers out there. I, I'm just not into it, but I'm not gonna sit here and like shame you for liking the stuff that you like. I'm not into it, but I do often see this conversation happening in the anime scene where like people will be super against what she's saying is the anime characters, but then they'll be okay with like furry content, which if you think about what the furry content also represents, it's like, it's just an interesting pattern that I've seen happen. I see it all the time. Ding, 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 she's a furry too. Yeah, pretty much anytime you see someone talking about anime and manga and trying to demonize it, they almost always consume the exact same content themselves. And on top of that, they're a furry. It, it pretty much happens every single time. Mm -hmm. But let's continue on with her clip here. You can literally go nearly to any massive manga stores or areas in the major cities in Japan and you will find areas. I'm just, her audio. Uh, this is I'm not trying to make too many digs at her, but like her audio genuinely gives me sensory issues. And I'm so sorry if it does for you, too. Of that manga store. That is specifically <sighs> for oh. Lolita character. Mm, oh, mm, okay. So I've been to Japan. I've been in these stores and like, I, I don't know how to like really describe this but like the images that she has like up on that screen. Um, I'm pretty sure when I was in this store, all the characters are depicted as 18 years old. Like, I don't think you can actually go into those stores where they're uh underage or something because i i remember like looking at some of these things wondering like oh that's interesting they sell hentai in like stores in japan that's kind of interesting they're all, all 18 from what i had looked at unless if there's like a store that i'm not aware of i, I don't remember it being like underage characters i remember them all being clearly depicted as 18. so this is a very simple point but it's definitely always worth making if she considers this stuff in the background to be cp by her own standard she downloaded it probably uncensored and then posted it for thousands of people to see online by her own standard she just downloaded and then redistributed redistributed cp mm. Like, are you crazy in your mind or something? Like, why would you ever think this is okay while you're demonizing it at the same time? Mm. It's just, it, it just shows how stupid all these arguments are and how hypocritical all these people are. And Lolita, if you don't know what that means, it means young girl. Actually, Lolita is a type of fashion that a lot of people partake where um, you wear very pretty dresses, not, not to like nitpick too much. And this it literally just means like cute fashion, by the way. This is the problem that the UN wants them to address. Honestly, I don't care if the character is over 18. If the character is over 18, I'm just going to be like, cool. Yeah, whatever you're into, man. If you want to look at that, that's cool. But not children. Mm -hmm. That is so up. That so she's trying to basically mask what the UN is doing. She's saying this is all about protecting kids and it's only targeting the specific types of characters she's talking about, but that's a gross misrepresentation of what they're trying to do at the UN. Mm. So here's what they're actually doing. They've been targeting- Oh God, look at this. This is, in this is crazy. Wow. Wow. I, 
Oh God, let's let's just have Rev explain this. This is word vomit. Japan for many, many years, and they can't really explain why they're singling out Japan in the first place. But anyways, this is what they're talking about with some of these pushes that the United Nations are doing. The final observation expressed concern that pornography, video games, manga, and other animated products may promote gender and sexual orientation based violence against women and girls and recommended that existing legal measures and monitoring, monitoring mm. programs be effectively implemented to address the production and distribution of pornography, video games, and animated products that promote discriminatory gender stereotypes and reinforce sexual violence against women and girls. Let me guess, they're not fans of Bayonetta, I'm guessing. Actually, Bayonetta is such a fun game to play. It, and I remember when that game came out and people were so angry about it, talking about like, oh, it's like completely sexualizing like women and doing all this bad stuff. And I'm pretty sure that Bayonetta was like her concept art, like how she looks was designed by a woman. Yeah, no, I'm right. Yeah, she was designed by... Uh, Hide uh, Hideki Kamiya and Mari Shimazaki. Yeah, no, literally, a woman designed Bayonetta's, like, character. I find it so interesting, like, if you're gonna make the argument about how this stuff demoralizes and promotes this harassment of women, like, you'll come to realize that a lot of the people who make things such as, like, sexy girls in video games and, like, TV shows, even, like, with hentai and stuff, a lot of it is made from women. Like, women make that kind of stuff. And a lot, if you like look at a lot of the interviews that people talk about when they make these kind of media, a lot of the women say how it makes them feel empowered. It makes them feel sexy. It lets them be more in tuned with their womanhood. You'll often hear that in reviews. And it's the same thing with like VTubing because I notice a lot of people have issues with like how sexy VTuber models are. And I know for a lot of women who do the more sexy stuff with VTubing, they also say it makes them feel empowered. It makes them feel sexy. And so it's just fascinating how it's fascinating when men say that they're here for like women and then women are saying how like this is like demoralized. But, but meanwhile, the women who are making the content they feel empowered. It's just an interesting argument. So it's not just these specific young character she's talking about. It's anything that promotes discriminatory gender stereotypes, whatever the hell that means. And without any sort of research or basis to make these claims, they say that these things in uh, fictional content are somehow leading to real life abuse. These people are- I, I don't understand that. That's like the same argument of people who are like, violent video games makes violent paper. And I don't know if you all know about this game called, I think it's called House Trap. But if you want to know about controversy, let's talk about the House Trap controversy real quick. The House Trap game most likely refers to Nice Trap, a Sega CD game from the early 1990s that became highly controversial due to its live action footage depicting scantily clad women being attacked by predators in a house, leading to Senate hearings about the video game violence and ultimately contributing to the establishment of the ESRB rating system. And it was interesting because um, Night Trap is, it was definitely like one of those controversial games that people were like, okay, well, this is like not okay. Like this is like hurtful for women and stuff. This was like a whole thing. And actually I'm pretty sure this game, as it says here, this is why like the rating systems had to be established. So that way people could say, okay, what is considered an R-rated game or a mature-rated game? And it was because of Night Trap, which is, guess what? Not even fictional or anime-related at all. It's real women that were, like, recorded for this kind of stuff. Basically just a repackaging of 90s soccer moms who used to say... Pretty much, yeah. Violent video games uh, make violent people, right? It's the same argument. It's just so woke, it's backwards. Mm -hmm. And now we're having people trying to justify these connections between anime, manga, and what have you to predatory behavior. It's just because they don't like manga. That's all it is. Like, that's all it really comes down to. Like, I get if, like, you want to be upset over Night Trap. Because, I mean, Night Trap during that time was, like, a pretty big deal. But, like, when it comes to, like, fictional characters, I, I feel like a lot of people just don't like it because it's a drawing and they're they're afraid of drawings and the only thing they're working on is their own emotions they have no actual proof yeah. of anything and looking at the standard about promoting uh discriminatory gender stereotypes i mean i'm pretty sure this is the kind of stuff they're talking about this is <laughs> more ai art <laughs> oh god it's 
you know, AI art. I just, I can't stop laughing when I see it. It's so funny. It looks so bad. Her own post from very recently. I mean, look at, look at not only the character that would probably fall under these United Nations standards mm. here, but also that, that hashtags. It's got to put in a hashtag gooner. <laughs> Gooner, that, that's not a real hashtag. That's not a real hat. Wait, is that an actual like real hashtag? Should I be like marking my post as hashtag Gooner? Hashtag Goon? <laughs> you know, I found out what Goon and Gooner and like Gooning meant recently. And I was like, no one actually sits there and says, I'm Gooning, I'm Gooning. Like, no one's actually saying that, right? Hashtag goon. Hashtag degen. Uh, very interesting stuff. But let's talk about the UN for a second. So oh. I can't imagine bootlicking. Oh my god, it's an old man. <laughs> well, actually, it is an old man. But this is kind of crazy how Clara is making all these claims. Meanwhile, the UN is doing some pretty heinous things to children. The United Nations. It couldn't be me. Uh, they are pretty much what is the equivalent of an international mm. criminal organization. What else do you describe them as? So even oh. some of the top children's rights officials in the United Nations have been jailed for charges relating to the abuse of children. In fact, there are endless articles you can oh find that God. are just so beyond disturbing. Repo that is horrifying. Like, what the? And this was like... 2018 that's not that long ago that is literally horrifying okay so don't you think it's kind of weird how like people do bad things and in order to like cover the bad things that they do they try to deflect the blame by shining light on other like bad things or things that can be perceived as bad if you shine the right light on it and it's interesting how a lot of the times people who do this kind of stuff are actual like bad people report finds UN employees 3300 responsible for 60,000 R words in the last 10 years oh my God. here's another one saying uh UN peacekeepers ran a child s ring Ew. in Haiti and it goes on and on and on like they are genuinely a very dangerous organization and you have to rely on their word and what they're trying to do to justify banning anime and manga. Like, these people are not to be trusted whatsoever. But she continues on here. And that's what the UN wants them to address. Because it's actually scary being a woman in Japan. They literally have specific train carriages that women can take to not share carriages with men during busy travel times. So, that they so I actually want to comment on that because I lived in Japan for a little while. Uh, so as a white woman who was in Japan, because like that's the only grounds I have on this as another white woman is talking about the dangers of women in Japan. I remember I had to commute in the morning and at nighttime during like really busy hours to get to my dormitory to my school. And I at nighttime, I would partake in bar culture in Japan because... What better way to practice my Japanese than to go to a bar and talk to Japanese folk? Because there there are like, um, there are international bars in Tokyo because I was in Shinjuku. And so there are like international bars where English people and like Japanese people could like come together and like mingle with each other to practice like language and stuff like that. I didn't go to those bars. I went to actual Japanese bars. I was in the red light district. That is where I hung out every night. One thing that I will say is that I did attract a lot of guys because a lot of like Japanese men were fascinated that a white woman could speak Japanese really well to them and had the I guess the courage to enter these bars because they often don't get foreigners who were in those bars. And then two, the biggest thing that I struggled with personally in Japan was people thought I was an S because I I hung out in the red light district. I like that is the where all the sex and all the partying kind of happens. And why did I hang out there? I just want to know what it was like. I just, I just wanted to know what it was like. I was like, oh, I want to go see what's kind of going down at the bars. So a lot of guys kind of thought I was an escort, but nothing happened to me. Like nothing terrible happened where I felt like I was unsafe. If anything, I felt like a lot more people were more protective of me like i met some really cool people who were like super protective of me and like looked out for me the entire time i also got to meet some host guys like that was fascinating too so like host culture in japan is so fascinating 
because you have like the cabarets and then you have host clubs. And I actually got to talk to this guy who was a host and he told me a lot about his job and kind of like what it's like there. Cause again, I hung out at the red light district. I was there. And even then I did not have any moments where I felt unsafe and I was in some sketchy areas. I still didn't feel like I was unsafe or not protected. So it's kind of interesting how anime and manga is being correlated to that. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. They don't get sexually abused or touched inappropriately or have pictures of their upskirts taken. Now, that does happen in Japan. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like that stuff doesn't happen. That is a problem, sure. But mind you, you know, she's from Ireland, right? Ireland has some, has a really bad drinking problem. And not only that, but like, I mean, America has their own problems with how they treat women as well. So like, I feel like every country has issues when it comes to how women are treated and how men are treated too. Like. It's every country has their own problems. So it's just kind of weird that we're focusing on Japan's problems because of anime and Asmongold. Asmongold and anime have caused all these problems that are abusing women in Japan. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. Just trying to get- Look at Rev's face, dude. Look at his face. Like, bro is literally jaw dropping watching this. Park. Or so this pretty much is where it always ends up, right? So it begins with, I don't like this anime and manga, blah, 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 blah. And then it turns into just, well, I mean, what else do you call it? Racism. Yeah. You're basically trying to imply that the entire nation of Japan is so predatory that no woman is safe in that country. And it's an absolutely outrageous thing to- I just realized she has a lot of manga in the back and a lot of like anime stuff. Like she's got Kingdom Hearts, she's got Pokemon- Oh my god, I thought that was a sex toy. Um, so, <laughs> oh my god. She has a lot of Pokemon. She's got some Overwatch stuff here. She's got some Naruto stuff over here. So, someone who actively consumes products in Japan and anime culture, that, that's fascinating. You say, yes, there are sex crimes in Japan, just like there are throughout the entire world, but it doesn't make Japan unique in any sort of a way. And the only justification mm. this person has is because... They produce anime and manga, which that somehow makes them special. I mean, of course, uh, reported <gasps> sex- Bro pulled out the receipts. What the- Oh my god. That- Okay, obviously this is like reported of this type of violence. And of course, there's always more that goes unreported. But this- She's from Ireland. This is a drastic contrast of the two countries here. Wow. Sex crimes are- Sometimes a misleading number because people just don't report that they're victimized. But this person's from Ireland, uh, trying to be a, a white savior and wagging their finger at Japan. Look at the rates at mm. Ireland versus Japan. Yeah. Again, reports aren't the most reliable thing, but I think maybe, just maybe, you should sit this conversation out. But let's wrap this up here. Uh, one more quote I want you guys to listen to. And I think if you're a real person with a real conscience and your heart goes out to the women of Japan who have to, you should be on the side of UN for them to be more censored and not allow for this to happen. No words, ladies mm. and gentlemen. You have to take the side of the UN here and ban this anime and manga. Otherwise, you just don't care about women. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not a real person. That's so weird. That That is really, really weird how like only real people who care about women? I don't get it. That's, I guess that's the uh, the, the route we're going with this one. Uh, this is insane. Also, I think her mind would explode if she found out that a very large portion of hentai artists are women. So like, yep. what are we, t it's all just men? This went from, I don't like anime and manga to there's a big predatory problem in Japan and also Japanese men are somehow uh, uniquely dangerous. I mean, that's how far it went. And that was all because of this one sentence that Asmund Gold had said in his video, which it looks like she probably didn't even credit his original video in this bio. Not like I would know because the video is gone. And I think it's kind of interesting because I noticed this seems to be a common pattern amongst creators where they will either tweet or upload a video slandering another creator. And the only time that they will take it down is if it backfires on them and they get a lot of heat for it. And I think the reason for this is because it's a lot easier to just ask for forgiveness later than to just, you know, not make fun of people. I don't know, it's just an interesting observation to me. All you had to do was say, mm, 
I don't like these things in certain anime and manga. I'm just going to avoid them. But no, it goes to this level and it always does for some reason. But that's going to do it for this video. I thought this was pretty insane. So I want yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you don't, if you don't like certain aspects of like anime and manga, that's, that's fine. It is just kind of weird to like try to sound woke and really base when you don't understand what you're talking about. Like this kind of stuff also confuses me to some degree in the sense of like, this is the first time like I'm really hearing about it. Like I'm aware kind of of this stuff, but because I don't know a lot about it, I'm not trying to make a whole big deal out of it. The only things that I can really talk about is the stuff that I do know, which is me knowing a lot about Japanese culture because it's what I studied in school. So it's fascinating how like how much of Japanese culture is misconstrued because it gets clicks in a video. It's it's very fascinating to see how far people are willing to go to get a couple of extra thousand views on their YouTube video. And that's going to be it for me today. Honestly, I wonder what she thinks about VTubing because I would imagine she probably thinks we're all like, I don't know, 300 pound men trying to pretend to be like children or something. She probably is one of those types of like viewers. So I don't know. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below because this is it's really fascinating how there seems to be like a common character trait amongst people like this. And it does bleed into the VTubing scene as well, unfortunately. But yeah, hopefully this brightens your day. So thank you so much for watching and being educated with me. And remember everyone, everything reminds you of something. Bye! Seriously, I can't believe I used to call myself Mari Rari. That was so cringe.